Good morning and welcome to Utopia Farms. We're going to head into the barn and see what happened today. I know uh, we had two triplets last night and a set of twins. So, yeah, this time of year they're throwing out the multiples. Before I start chores, I always uh, do a quick scan of uh, what's going on in the jug so I know what's up and coming and who I have to deal with. She's got twins. She's got twins. This girl had twins last night. Hi, they're looking very nice. They're looking very nice. Bottle babies are waiting. This, this old girl, poor thing, she of course had triplets. And uh, this, got, this girl has twins, but I see uh, one of the lambs from the other pen popped in the theater and is in there. Oh, and this girl, she has triplets every year. You have triplets every year, honey. And I know for a fact that she only has half an udder. We keep her because she's just an awesome sheep and she has lots of milk on one udder. But she always gives us these things that look like this. Like, totally lovely. She's got such a nice laugh. Oh, but she, you always have the nicest of lambs. You always make work for me. So I'm with the triplets. She's got two girls and a boy. And of course, the one I would have kept as a girl is a boy. Never fails. He's so cute. Okay, so I'm in, um, this would be the third Suffolk lamp group, and for some reason, these 30 ewes produce a phenomenal amount of rams. So there's more uh, ram lambs in this pen than the others. Of course, right away she puts me a, to a liar because this is a ewe lamb. But someone uh, noticed when Katie was in the creep pen yesterday that all the sheep looking at her were rams, and that's this pen. And what was also asked was, uh, are ram lambs generally more friendly than, or curious, than the ewe lambs? And you'd have to do a study on it, but I would say that they definitely are. Um, and why that is, I'm not sure. You'd also have to do a study. These are probably good university studies. Um, but um, my theory is that uh, the ram lambs, I'm just sitting here and I'm guessing that a whole bunch of ram lambs are gonna come up to me shortly. Well, unless they're more interested in Katie, which is always a possibility. But um, my theory is that the ram lambs are like that because for one thing I think it's uh, it could be a dominance issue um, they've got more testosterone and they gotta be the the fighters with the other rams to hold off the competition and they gotta be the aggressive breeders and um, I guess as a, is as a lamb that presents itself in uh, more curiosity, more outgoing behavior. And as they develop and mature, it turns into more of the uh, breeding related things. So inevitably I'll have a million ram lambs that want to be my buddy. And as they get rammy, you got to watch those guys because they can turn from buddy to I want to be your superior very Are quickly. you pretty or what? Uh. 
I really like him. All right, now as they go to the creep feeder, you'll see all the blue tags. The blue tags are boys. Septex ram there. Big meaty boy. Got a nice suffolk ram there. So I'm in the replacement ewe lamb pen right now. And someone asked me to talk to you about Scrapey today. Now, usually technical and medical things I don't talk about too much because I definitely don't have the expertise on those matters. But I can tell you generally, and you can do the research yourself, um, about Scrapey. So Scrapey is um, a disease pretty well around the entire world. I know countries are trying to get uh, scrapey free certification that their whole country uh, is free of it. But it's been around for hundreds of years in sheep and goats and even cows get it. But in cows they call it a different thing. They call it mad cow disease. Um, it's actually not um, a bacteria or a virus or anything they get. It's um, it's a protein that they're born with. And um, what's it called? I think it's a, a prion or something like that. But anyway, uh, they, they have these uh, proteins in their body uh, naturally. And Usually, after five years old or so, um, the protein can start to kind of interact with other proteins in the body, and it causes them to mutate. It's almost like um, the idea with cancer, um, how the cells mutate other cells. And um, what happens is that uh, the sheep or the animals um, show neurological symptoms because it affects the brain heavily and um, they'll start staggering and stuff. Uh, they'll lose weight. Um, one, one common thing, and that's why they call it scrapey, is that a sheep or a goat will scratch against things and they'll scratch and scratch and scratch and itch and itch. It's really itchy and their wool will start to fall off and it's not lice or anything like that it's actually a disease and then they'll do almost have listeriosis symptoms where they'll start spinning and staggering and things like that so, and they are just wasting away and itching so um what people do it it's they don't know how it's passed on they're not totally sure but um, in order to eradicate it, people do basically DNA testing on their sheep. So um, with Scrapey, we do, we do test our rams now. We didn't used to, but we do now, most of them. And um, basically for us, we use um, Gene Check in Colorado in the United States. And I, I'll go uh, into the other barn later and show you the applicator and how it's done. But uh, it's a really simple system where um, it's uh, like a hole punch. You put it in their ear and it makes a tiny hole. And after a very short period of time, that hole seals up. But it, it pulls out a skin tag. And that skin tag falls into a little cup. And 
the cup is sent away back to the United States and within a matter of days they will have the results back to us. So what you're looking for basically is animals that are RR on codon 171 on the DNA strand. Um, some people test the other codons, um, but if you have an RR on one, then it means all the others are. It's very complicated, but basically to make it simple, you're looking for RR and R stands for resistance. So they are like basically doubly resistant. So if for some reason Scrapey came to your community or to your farm by the unknown cause, because they do not know the cause, um, if your sheep are RR, they will not get it. And some countries, if the if Scrapey is nearby, they will call sheep um, within a certain radius if they're not RR, just to get a lid on it. So RR sheep would never have to be called. And at the other end of the spectrum would be a QQ sheep. A QQ means it's susceptible. It has no protection whatsoever if Scrapey came into your flock it would be likely to catch it. And then between the two is a QR. And a QR has some resistance, but isn't totally resistant. So ideally, if you can, you should purchase rams that are RR. Because if you purchase an RR ram, every lamb that that ram is bred to will have scrapey resistance. Even if all your ewes were QQs, which mean they had no resistance whatsoever, the R gets injected into all of those ewe lambs, or lambs period, and become QRs. So your flock is pretty well covered. And if you use a RR ram again on those lambs, uh, your chances of getting our, our sheep out of them will also increase. So um, that's ideally what you want to do. Um, at our farm, we try to always buy in our, our rams. Our Dorset flock, we've been testing them from the beginning and as far as we found, we, we, do, we don't test the ewes. We test the rams and we've never had a Dorset ram come out anything but RR. So I'm considering my Dorset flock totally scrapey resistant. My Suffolk flock is not. Um, we have a lot of RR rams here. And like I said, now that we have been doing the scrapey testing, we will try to use only RR rams but inevitably um, your best ram is a QR I got I don't know how many nice QR rams we've had so if if the ram is phenomenal we will use QR rams and um, we will tend to use them on ewes who we suspect of being RR meaning they've been their sires were RRs so that we have a higher chance of them throwing our, our lambs but um, we do have one ram on the farm that we use sparingly but we still use them who is a QQ um, we bought him in from a breeder who we thought had an RR ram but yeah, just me being me, I tested him anyway when I was testing my own rams, and he came out QQ. It was very dis disappointing. It, it's Snappy. Snappy's a QQ ram. And uh, we, we have uh, tested a lot of his lambs that we keep back. And I'm guessing our suffix are quite RR because um, we've gotten a lot of... Um, QR lambs from him, and QR is the best uh, 
um, a QQ ram can ever produce. A QQ can never produce a scrapey, fully scrapey resistant sheep. It can only produce a partially resistant. But Snappy is perfect in every other way. So he's here. We use him mainly on grades. Um, but we'll usually toss in a couple of uh, uh, ewes as well that are purebreds just to get his confirmation and build in. But like I say, any of our snappy ewes that we held back, uh, they, they automatically, when they go through the chute, get put with an RR ram. So we're always juggling and, and, and testing and trying to make things work. Um, the world is not perfect. I would like them to be all RR, not because there's a real problem with scrapie in Canada, like you don't see it too often. In fact, I've never met anyone who's had it here, but um, there was a mad cow outbreak about 20, 25 years ago, which slammed the border shut between Canada and the US because a cow came down with mad cow and it got shipped into the United States and they discovered it. Um, and that shut the border to cows and sheep. Since that time, um, the border has reopened for import export between the two countries for cattle, but sheep, the U.S. still won't allow Canadian sheep into the country. Um, this year they just lifted restrictions on bringing sheep in, but um, the requirements to get Canadian sheep over are extremely high. We have a, a really poor scrapie program in Canada and very, very, very few breeders are on it because um, what you have to do, it's, it's just a little more extreme than is necessary, taking heads off the sheep and doing brain sa tissue samples and stuff. It's not something that most farmers want to be doing, decapitating their sheep and doing brain samples. So as far as I know, there's only like six people in all of Canada that are on the program. But that's not to say Canadians ignore the scrapie issue. Uh, we definitely do not. And a, a lot of the um, purebred breeders are scrapie testing, doing the DNA testing like we are, because of course we, we want um, disease-free sheep and uh, we definitely don't want to have to eradicate our flocks if, if the disease happened to show its head in the area. Hi. So, um, until the DNA testing is acceptable to the Americans, um, Canadian sheep will not be heading over the border anytime soon. But I imagine uh, there are people lobbying for that to change because uh, the, as far as I, I understand, the DNA sampling is extremely accurate. And if you are an RR sheep, you are not going to get it. You are not going to spread it. So it, it shouldn't be, should, should be that difficult, really. <laughs> There's Chewy. Anyway, that was long drawn out and not perfect. Michael or someone else can <laughs> correct it if I said anything wrong, but um, that's basically it. So these are the uh, scrapey pliers we got from Jean Check in Colorado. They send them to you uh, the first time you deal with them. And I can't remember what they cost, but they're, ex they're metal and they're extremely... Uh, extremely good pliers and they weren't very expensive and this is what the tags look like and you'll you'll put them into here and if you see that this is a little container at the end so this plier with that pointy thing there will pop just a tiny tiny you can see how small the it is it's just a tiny skin sample 
and I'll pop it into that little container and then I'll mark their tag number on there or any information about the sheep and uh, then it will be sent to them just in the mail and they'll get back to you with the results. It's really slick. Just uh, filled up our creep feed bin from our mixer. And we're feeding these sheep. Look pretty hard to pick uh, good and bad right now. Like I see three, four in a row here that are um, definitely above average. And you too. And you're a girl even. We got 85 and 79, who I always like. This one, oh, that's a girl too, really nice. Let's see how much they've grown. Just as, as soon as they start eating food, then they skyrocket. basically fight for the food. That's why uh, when we take the wall down we wait for a while to make sure everyone's tough because now this is where you, you don't want to be a shy sheep. You got to be aggressive and if you're hungry you got to go for it. You guys are all going for it, aren't ya? It's hard to walk among them now because they're so big. We're going to start to uh, shortly start weighing. We just weigh the odd few to get a ballpark. We'll measure uh, a medium and a large to know where they're at. Small, smaller we don't need to pay attention to uh, for a while. There he is, number two. See the size difference between him and that other? Well, it's a U, but still. It's a big boy. Hi, sweetheart. And then this morning I was talking to a Dorset breeder um, who has beautiful Dorsets in the UK. And, uh, he had posted a, an advertisement for a sale and show in the UK and it showed a picture of a Dorset ram on the poster cover with uh, wool around its eyes. And I said, uh, I asked him, I said, is that not frowned upon there? Is that not a fault? And he says, no, that's fine. That's acceptable here. And I kind of always look to the people in the UK as the experts on everything. Because uh, this is my number nine, who I really, really like. And he's the second one in here. And as you see, he's got wool around his eyes. But apparently they say that that's good. Now, our preference is no wool around the eyes. So we will definitely breed to get it out. But if that's acceptable, it makes me feel a lot happier about that ram because uh, I really, really like him. He's pretty. Probably if we show, he'll be one. Oh, and he can hardly fit through the creep area. He'll probably be one of our show boys. This is kind of like deja vu or the movie Groundhog Day. 
snowing again. We're supposed to get quite a bit of snow overnight apparently, so we'll see what tomorrow has to bring. Anyway, I'm going to call it a, a day um, and get in to make dinner and hope that you guys will join us again tomorrow for the next episode at Utopia Farms. Bye for now.